More appropriately, I want to talk about something that I found on Amazon. Now, I say found someone on um, Twitter a little while ago, a guy called Ruben, um, on my Twitter feed. He highlighted a card to me. On Amazon, they were listing a 2.5 GBE and indeed sort of 5 GBE card, depending on how you read it, for 25 quid. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a very very quick video. I say quick, I have no idea how long this video is going to be right now. Um, I want to talk about PCIe upgrades. More appropriately, I want to talk about something that I found on Amazon. Now, I say found someone on um, Twitter a little while ago, a guy called Ruben, um, on my Twitter feed. He highlighted a card to me. On Amazon they were listing a 2.5 GBE and indeed sort of 5 GBE card, depending on how you read it for 25 quid. That is ridiculous. Now, 2.5 GBE is something that has grown in quite a lot of attention at the moment. With the new Acer store that I've got here on the table that I'm doing testing with, featuring two 2.5 GBE ports, as well as um, gigabits and 10 gigabit switches supporting all the different variants of connection in between, I thought it would be worth a punt and buying that card. Now, I hopefully it's been on the screen during the course of me talking here. The actual listing on Amazon was so vague, I was 90% sure it was a scam. I'd heard of the brand and I'd kind of seen a card like this similar, but given that most cards like this retail for at least 50 or 60 quid at the barest minimum, the idea of this 25 quid card actually coming through was something I thought was near enough impossible. But here it is, that's the card there. Um, and the device itself, when it's arrived, what I wanted to do was run some tests. One, to see if the card works. That's the first one. For 25 quid, I won't lie, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But two, I want to test it out on some different NASs. So for this video, part one, I'm going to test this inside a Synology NAS. The NAS behind me, the 2419 Plus. After that, I'm going to use exactly the same card, and I'm going to test it on a QNAT NAS in the video afterwards. And finally, we're of course going to be doing some speed tests if, with this card, if it works, it, with our new Acer Store, Nimbus Store 4 NAS. Because upgrading is actually surprisingly simple. Uh, there's a lot of different options open to you. You can get very cheap 10 GB upgrade cards now for you know about 80 quid. You can get far more featured cards for about 90 to 100 quid. And these are ones that can be installed inside NASes and PC and server systems. Or if you're a Thunderbolt user, you can use a Thunderbolt adapter that connects from a Thunderbolt port to a 10 gigabit Ethernet port. So that's 10 gigabit, but these retail for somewhere between 160 to 250 pounds, depending on the brand. And for a number of you, you don't want 10 gigabit, you just want a little bit of a boost and you want to spend the appropriate amount. Hence why this card, let's get rid of that, is quite important. Now, before we get installed inside, let's do a very quick unboxing, because trust me, this is gonna be a quick unboxing. That's the card there on the front. As we can see, it's one of those boxes that they've kind of tried to cover as much ground as possible. Look at the sides there. And we will be doing a completely separate piece on NAS Compares as well. We've got um, the model number there, um, IOPC E8128. Uh, 125-G LAN, and they are listing it as a 2.5G card. I know the Amazon listing description changed ever so slightly between the buying and the publishing of this uh, video, so hopefully we can use Wayback Machine to get the original uh, version of that. If we look inside, we have the card. Also inside, we have your standard, here are our business cards um, item you get from a lot of Eastern companies on Amazon, listing eBay and Alibaba and stuff. Uh, a certification sticker of some sort. We have a driver CD that is a blank CD with pandas on it. God only knows what that is. And we even get a separate bracket. So we have a change of bracket because this is high profile and what we want is a short profile bracket for this. Whereas the QNAP I'm going to be testing with in the next video requires the other bracket. Now we have instructions here. And again, I haven't read this yet, so for all I know, this is going to be absolutely dreadful. This is our user, man user manual, version 1.0. Standard kind of printed interface there. And do you know what? Let's read some of this verbatim. This card is a 2.5 GBPS Ethernet PCIe Express card, which is specifically designed to plug into a desktop equipped with an available 1x, 4x, 8x, 16x PCIe Express PCIe slot. 
It supports high performance dual channel networking and full duplex communication to achieve up to 2,500 megabits and fast transfer rates, yet is compatible, yes, uh, with existing Ethernet. This card comes with software drivers for all desktop operating systems, including Microsoft Windows, Linux, and Mac OS X. And there's lots of information there about the first time setup. So, we've got the card. Let's get this opened. And in the keynote video, I will be doing this full unboxing once again. So I apologize if you watch that video as well and you hear a lot of this twice. But there is our card. Let's bring that closer to the camera there for you. It's a very, very small card. There's our copper-based RJ45 port there. That's 2.5 GBE. On the bottom, we've got the usual serial number and the same model number there. If you have a look at that, you can see that on screen. And again, it's an incredibly tiny card. I mean, again, I can try and bring that to the ca camera, but we are going to lose focus there if I do that. Uh, the main controller chip here, from what I can gather, um, is an RTL8125. For those with a pen and paper, do write that down. And there is another controller here. This is the TAI MAG. GD242X001N. That's right, super train spotter. Now, to put that into perspective, if we open the 10 GB card from QNAP, and indeed we also have the Synology card here as well, we compare this card, and remember, these are 10 gigabit Ethernet cards. So if we compare all of these cards, okay, so first and foremost, that's the QNAP card with that little silver heatsink. That's a Synology card, dead giveaway, it's got the logo. Okay, so we've got those cards there. And then we compare, let's move to the Synology card, because this is a Synology video, how these two cards compare. So again, very little on this device. Moreover, if we get that on screen there, there's almost no heat sink on that 2.5 GBE card as well. It is not really built for too much operations, and of course, the PCIe version is much, much simpler than the one found on that one. I believe this is times um, th um, times eight. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this card, I'm gonna get that bracket off, and I'm gonna install it inside this Synology 2419 Plus to see if one, it, the card will actually be recognized, and what's our data transmission if we can set it up accordingly. I will be doing full speed tests if this card works in later videos. I'm going to be doing lots of testing, particularly with the Acer Store NAS. But otherwise, let's make our way over to the screen. Right, well, I'll be honest, this is probably one of the shortest tests I've ever done here on the channel. So far, I've tried to do a number of things with this card and I've met with nothing but failure. Hopefully there's a video on screen showing me installing the card that first time, but I'm going to the final stage of testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the NAS here, two seconds. And we're going to let the Synology boot up in time. Now, that's going to take a few minutes. And in that, those few minutes, I'm going to tell you everything I've done with this device so far on the noisiest chair in the world. Now, so far, I've tried to install the card on its own. And then I booted the Synology NAS with the card installed. But I was connecting via one of the one gigabit Ethernet ports on that 2419 Plus. Unfortunately, although it did boot and go straight into the user interface of DSM when I went via the IP, I used Synology Assistant and scanned the local area network for the NAS. Unfortunately, when I went in, I went into the network manager and the card did not appear. Now, a little number of you out there might be thinking, well, why didn't you try booting with a LAN cable connected to that 2.5 GB port and running into my netgear switch just over here in the back well i did just that i depowered down the device safely i then removed the 1 gbe lan cable and connected it into the brand newly installed 2.5 gbe card when i tried booting it up that time the device wouldn't boot which isn't ideal so i removed the card reinstalled the card removed power from the device throughout reinstalled power then booted the device the device booted the device booted all the way up but the device could not be found by Synology Assistant on the network manager. So remember, we'd removed the 1 GBE cable and just connected via the 2.5 GBE connection given to us by that NIC card that we'd installed. So that didn't work. 
I even tried resetting the network settings by the power button system on the front. You can hold it for a few seconds. That still came to nothing. So <clears throat> we're going for the final stage of testing right now. The device I've just booted up is connected with a 1GBE cable going into the network switch and a 2.5 GBE connection. So both of them have got Cat 6s running out into the switch. So when I run this uh, Synology Assistant Management tool here, it, in theory, will at least find the Synology via that 1GB connection. But what we're hoping for is that it shows two live connections to that NAS. So I'm going to use the mouse refresh the network settings and i know you can't really see it on screen i was going to do a screen recording but i left it off for now so straight away the synology has appeared once it has appeared uh, at the ip 10.4.101.109 um, which i worryingly suspect is that one gbe connection again and it doesn't seem to be finding that second connection so what i'm going to do is make my way in have a look into this uh, see what the card has to say for itself and we're going to go into Network Manager to see if we can at least see something registered where that card is. But right now, this test is looking like a big fat fail. Um, we're going to make our way into the DSM. You can see it right now. And again, I do apologise that I'm not recording on screen there. But I just thought, given that things are going so badly, I just wanted to show you guys that I've tried everything I can think of. I'm also using the tiny mic this time, not the big standy mic. So I apologise if the sound isn't quite as good as you might like. Now if we go into the control panel here, we can have a look, go into the network settings, and from here, go into the network interface, and unfortunately, all I can see here, if we zoom in, see if we can make that bigger for you guys at home, all we're seeing is that one connection there at the top. We're just seeing a single LAN connection, which is that one one LAN in the rear there. We're not seeing anything else. It hasn't registered anything else. In the past, when we've installed 10 GBE cards, it would create a brand new entry on that list. But I think that's going to cease the testing here with the Synology. What I'm going to do now is power this bad boy down, and then I'm going to move over to the QNAP testing in the next video. Um, now, of course, when that video goes live, I now know the results. But fingers crossed, QNAP has always had a history of being a lot more open about its compatibility, and I think we might see some results there, but we're going to be using this QNAP rack right here, so I'm going to make my way over to that QNAP for the next video. Thank you so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed this. Sorry it was a big fat failure, but let's be honest, the number of you like me were thinking, mm, it's not going to work, not at that price, and I don't blame you. So, let's make our way over to the next video, and I'll see you next time.